So, this is the site. A huge space and festival weeds. Best not to look at it too much, I think. We're mad, you know? I'm Kim, this is Matthew. And uh, we have two children, two girls. Uh, Chloe is eight with curly hair, and Emily is six with straight hair. Basically, we're trend analysts, so we look at trends, analyse them, regurgitate them. And uh, talk about them ad infinitum. Kim and Matthew are great. They're just lovely people. What's my take on them? They're just lovely, lovely people. I'm attracted particularly to things that are a little bit odd. Yeah. Things that are a little bit out of the out of the norm. New and different. New and different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. New, New and different. different. Barking mad is always good. Over um, the top. Beautiful. Yeah, quality. And, and, I like a bit of quality. And I particularly like beauty in ugliness. And that's what I'm looking for. Uh, people who are open-minded and who want something special and are prepared to be that little bit brave. We live at 101, and we're moving to 113. 113 has got a big, 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 big garden. It hasn't been touched for 12 years. Waste, you know, a real, real bit of yeah, urban that. jungle out yeah, there. That's yeah. what it is, a bit of urban jungle. I want it to be a space where we can get loads of the neighbours in, you know, and just kind of once a year go, come on, let's have a barbie and go for it. Yeah, yeah. Argue with them in the yeah. garden instead of in the street. No, yeah. no. Yeah. But yeah, to share the space. <laughs> I'd like to share the space as well, because it feels a bit greedy, because it's big. I'm just thinking he's got more done in the morning than I would have got done in about you know, three weeks, even if I had a digger. And I'm also thinking, <laughs> what on earth are they going to do? It's what... Our job is to do something different and to always try and look at that space out there in a different way. That's quite simply what our job is, and that's what I'm looking for the, for the clients to understand. And for Matthew and Kim, I'm working on an idea for a garden pavilion. Basically, a large box, but with walls that can be lowered to the ground to become decking. There'll be cables and winches on the outside so as not to affect the simple shape of the structure. It's going to be great. It's just a box of tricks. You heard it here first. The main job on this side was always going to be clearing land that hadn't been cultivated for years, digging out piles and piles of bindweed roots. While the team were doing that, I talked to boss man Sean about how we could raise and lower the pavilion walls. I still I don't quite get how we're going to achieve this if we can't have the wires. We have been talking about this for a few weeks, really, haven't yeah. we? It has been talked about a lot, but it's never been actually fixed down exactly what's, what the deal is, you know? If you think about it, you have to pull from the corner of that or from mm -hmm. the middle or from wherever yeah. up towards that way. So that mm -hmm. will naturally mean a wire will run up that way. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that, that's okay on the ends, right? The problem is in the middle. Suddenly you have wires in the middle that you won't be able to walk around on this deck at all. You are going to end up with wires. Yeah, uh, wires are fun. Right, but not in that area. No. With a pulley there. You know that, Ken. Can't come out of the building. No. Right. Are you with me? I'm totally with you. There's a huge amount of work to do on that. And if I were you, I'd spend a couple of days working out that and just let the lads get on with what they're doing and don't worry about anything else. None of it is applicable if this isn't sorted. So Sean went and built a model of the pavilion and called a meeting early next day to figure out a way to move the walls without any cables. 
Well, I draw it to the answer to the round underneath. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So it's, it's you're pulling it and it's pushing as well at the same time from underneath. Yeah. Mm. Totally expensive way. Yeah. <laughs> the totally expensive way. <laughs> the problem still is that the cable has to be attached to it. Yeah. That's, that is the big problem, isn't it? Eventually, we realised that we wouldn't need winches and cables at all. What we've decided on is that it's going to be spring assisted, so there's going to be no cables. So a person is going to be able to walk around and shove one of those up, get in the centre, in a similar way to my bed, to the way that works. Oh. It was still a straight one person. <laughs> it's never done that before. And, and that's it. And this is what we're talking about, actually. Jesus, we're very, fair dopey, aren't we? <laughs> I told you to go to bed and sleep, isn't it? <laughs> well, hopefully the spring-assisted pavilion walls will be easier to lift than the spare bed, but we won't know for sure until they're assembled on site. Meanwhile, Machi is getting a little nervous. I think the reality sort of dawned. You know, it's like, oh my, what, help, you know, what's happening? We don't know what's going on, we don't know what the plans are, and it's all, it's all going on. Well, now that the mechanical problems were solved and the garden was cleared, I invited Matt and Kim to see the design for the first time. So, your garden. Uh, oh, yes. We had the design uh, very early on, but we realised we hadn't quite figured out how to build it. Okay. Now, it is exciting. This is the pavilion, right. which is a very simple metal framed wooden box, and it all closes up. In a way, it's inspired by 1950s architecture. And it's beautiful wood, western red cedar, right. and the flaps all come down, so it opens completely, and then it closes up. The, the lawn is perfectly level, and then you come to a tunnel. Right. Uh, it's that galvanised grill. Yeah, it's, right. it's, wa it's like walkway, industrial walkway. Uh, so it starts on the lawn, <laughs> then goes into planting, so you have plants coming, yeah. and then comes out into this amazing room, which is telegraph poles stuck in the ground for five metres square. Then we also have telegraph poles randomly placed at quite a height in throughout the site. And five of them have three rings of neon of different colours. Right. set on them at different heights. Wow. And you also have 20 discs which go on the ground, coloured discs, which just dot, 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 wherever you want. It's like yeah. movable art. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you okay. come out and take them. I think the elegance is in its simplicity. Come out the back here for a sec. There's <laughs> one element I want to show you. So this is just a usable room for everybody. It's full yeah. of life and then it's you know, yeah. open, yeah. you're seeing trees through it, you're seeing yeah. the stems yeah. through it. I mean, I think that's very beautiful there. I love that idea of looking through the structure and knowing that we can close it up. Yeah, 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 and have any configuration you want. Yeah. 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 Nobody, yeah. If, if they're oh. narky neighbours, they don't see what's going on, do you know? They're not invited to the party. I'm pleased and a bit, a bit bemused. I'm like, this is, whatever I thought was going to happen, this wasn't it. And I'm really, I'm really excited by it, it's great. Jason Harvey and his brother Dean got to work in the pavilion at their workshop near Swindon, while Sean and his team started building the other main structure at the end of the garden, a mighty fortress which will be an exciting space for the kids, Emily and Chloe. The main plant in the garden will be turf in the form of a huge lawn, which will form a carpet around the two structures. But I also wanted to plant some formal beds at the edges, so I went off in search of some suitable material. One of the requests for the garden was for colour. And these are mallows. I'm putting them in. Large specimens, so we get a blast of colour straight away. The branches, fantastic. 
I'm gonna get loads of climbers for one of those long walls. A lot of plants in this section are tender. Look at that lovely blue potato bush. It's not hardy. Fantastic flower, though. I'd love to use that somewhere. But things like the fuchsias and some of the hebes will be too tender where we are. Look at that, Lanestra. Honeysuckle. Just fantastic. June to August flowers. Perfect time. When you're out, actually in the garden, enjoying the garden, that will be in flower. And a great ivy. And this one has the advantage of being evergreen. Hedra Jester, it's called. Jasmine, perfect. Solanum crispin glass nevin, fantastic wall plant. Whenever I see this in a garden centre, I always buy one. And actually, I should buy one for my house. And a light flower and clematis against that concrete wall. And maybe a fig tree. I've got a grapevine, I put a grapevine in there, and if I put a fig against that wall, it'll just do really well. How exciting. The problem is a lot of these plants are gonna be lost in the vast space that we have. These are great for uh, the seeing all, you can get different seeing all the flower at different stages right through the summer from very early until quite late really. I think that's it. In a moment. Back in Ealing we had a delivery. It's two sections of the tunnel that's going to be going into the fourth type building down there made out of the telegraph poles. And it's going to be elevated over the ground and all welded together. Nice material. And it feels good and solid as well. And it's not even welded yet. Really what I wanted to do was put the turf down around the building when it was in place. There's a lot of work in it. There's no way he's going to get it delivered to me today, so it's tomorrow. But we can't leave the turf and the rolls in this heat for another day. So basically we're just going to pick whatever areas we're not going to be using at the moment, turf it. Then we'll have to lift it again in the morning. While we waited for the pavilion to arrive, I decided to take Sean to see an extraordinary exhibition. Watch out, don't crash, for God's sake. <laughs> you hate being driven. You love being filmed. I do not. You do. I do not. Yes, you do. Grumpy, Sean. I'm not grumpy at all. <laughs> They're just trying to wind me up. That's all. It's a celebration of the work of milliner Philip Tracy, whose creations have inspired me for many years. He's obviously a genius, and that word is often overused. Uh -huh. He takes the very concept of something, yeah. in this case a hat, and he completely turns it on its head, yeah. and he determines that it can be anything, anything that all. you want it yeah. to be. I look at this and I think, why can't a garden be like that? Why does a garden shed have to be a garden shed? Can it, if a hat can be like that, you know, 
They're all natural forms. That is the most extraordinary thing. It's a satellite dish yeah. with feathers all around it. That's one of those pitcher plants. But again, you could transfer that shape. It's, yeah. it's weird how it evolves, and you can tra transfer that into any structure you yeah, like to think of. Why not? And how do you get the wire to stand like that? All that engineering we do is big and heavy and massive. This yeah. lad is in his workshop in the middle of the night. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, uh, and how is, do you get yeah. to do that and create that I elegance? Stay exactly that line? Really I say exactly. Yeah. That really blew my, my head when I saw that because it's. It's different. It takes a while to get used to. You big fecker, would you say something? Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about that one. No, I was waiting for you to come oh, in. I was just giving you that. Yeah. You wouldn't even think it was a hat. You know what I mean? When you put that on, it's, it, that's one of the most amazing ones I've seen on anybody. The way it comes down over the eyes and everything else. Yeah, it frames. It uses the whole face, doesn't it? And that turns a lady into a peacock. Absolutely. People ask me, you know, garden designer, who's your favorite? Where'd you get your inspiration from? Who's your favorite designer? It's Philip Tracy, because he's questioned the very thing that a hat is, mm. and he's made it what he wants. And that's a concept that when you take it into the garden and you begin to question everything. Now, what we're doing in this garden is very, very simple. We're doing a garden building. Mm. It's actually the simplest shape that you can, uh, you can create. But it's all about looking differently at what a room can be. It's prone it down to simplicity and elegance in shape and material. Mm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what do you want me to say? That's it. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go now? <laughs> the pavilion is here. It's red. Blimey, it's a modernist pavilion. So do we get instructions with it? We're you just going to leave it by the wall. You need a screwdriver, a hammer. And a very big welder. And a very... <laughs> <laughs> structure up here just beyond the traffic lights which is a temporary structure because they're porta cabins on stilts above the above a street this structure to me is architecture and it's pure architecture it may be temporary architecture and it might only have a license to be there for two months or something like that but have a look at it now as, as a material that metal is uncompromising unforgiving um, and it looks so funny in there if that was in the grounds of an art gallery, there'd be people, you know, with cheap white wine walking around saying, oh, darling, isn't it wonderful? It's fantastic. And the juxtaposition between the, the lightness of the scaffolding poles and the heaviness of these big blocks of steel are just something else. And I'd imagine they're the best offices in healing because the sense of excitement from working through them must be immense. And we've taken that idea of a container and we've let all the walls fall down and we've plunked it in the middle of the garden. And it has that sort of excitement because it's not what you expect. Time now to see if these huge springs, usually found on horse box doors, would prove just as effective on our pavilion. That's amazing. Did I look a bit too surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Open 
says me. Every day me. Oh, oh, look. What do you think, Em? No, says me. Clothes says me. And what do you think about that? What do you think? Fantastic. Well, I'm very, very relieved that uh, these doors are working because before we actually tried them on set, we didn't actually know whether they were going to work or not. So it's uh, it's a very, very, very big relief. You'll see that the lawns are cut at right angles everywhere. And so we're choosing some choice plants to go at those main corners. And this hazel is, is one of them. It needs to swing around a little bit and tilt, I think, slightly away from the wall. Yeah, lovely. And immediately we have that in, it's taken away from the fact that the wall is coming in at an angle, in at an angle and softening it, which is wonderful greeny wine foliage. I love this plant. Yeah, a little bit more actually towards here, just a little bit. Yeah, that's lovely. What we've done is planted an initial barrier of sorbus trees and underneath this back setting the borders is our second barrier of, of, of planting. We're using purple hazels, which are the tall guys in at the back, and we're using quite a few of these in the garden. To and then the to the front, some nicer specimens, I suppose, like these quite large sages, and then these lovely light achilleas in, in front. So all the colors in this border, at this stage, are very subtle. Then a bright load of hydrangeas, and then back to some viburnum davidii, which would be fun. So spots of color in with more subtle planting. Over the other side, we have this horrible concrete wall that we don't want to go near because we'll undermine the foundations. We can't get climbers up against the wall, so we'll plant a bed in front of the pathway, which will make the pathway disappear. It'll be great for maintenance for the border, and you can walk down solidly all the way down the, the garden. The type of planting, as I say, is, is mixed. Most of these plants are low growing. Most of them are very good ground cover. And what the lads are doing now are putting on a mulch of forest bark, which will suppress weeds and it will also retain moisture. So the bed has been watered before they put it on and it's highlighting all the plants. It looks wonderful when you put it on originally. In a few years now, this garden will be amazing. my discs of color, but they go against the lines of everything else. And they break it up and kind of make a mockery out of uh, the rigidness of stuff. Somebody's put a garden in our wasteland.
this. <laughs> Look at this. Under the tree, we got our tree. Our branch. This is so nice. I want to lie on the ground. Can I do that? Matt? Hmm. Come and lie on the ground. Come and lie on the ground? Yeah. What, me with my rheumatism? Yeah, come on. What like that? <laughs> wow. This is just brilliant. This wow. is a They're lovely, gonna love it. lovely room. They are going to love it. No, listen, listen. I know. Great sound. I absolutely love it. It's wonderful and I would never, ever in a million years have done it. And it's so serene. We had no preconceptions. We had no idea. We really wanted Dermot just to do what he wanted to do mm. because mm. that's what designers do, or they should do. Very often designers are asked to do something and then they're restricted and held back and everything else. So as we had absolutely nothing to lose because I was to hear in nettles and bindweed. It just seemed really easy just to let, let mm. it just happen. But I was a, a trifle worried that it was like we've got this sort of log fort at the back and then we've got this pavilion for adults, but kind of where's the girly bit? Um, but it's much softer than I imagined it to be. And certainly with all the plants, since the plants have gone in and the trees have gone in and the, and the telegraph poles with the neon and and the swing, we have to, you know, he's, he's given us a swing and that's just a, wonderful. The, the bonus was just the, the, the joy of it coming together. It's been fantastic just to see something become real. Just stunning. Stunning is my word for it. It's just all unbelievable. In, all it needs now is people. Yeah. And kids. Yeah. The fun we've had in this garden revolves around taking a very, very simple shape, a rectangular box, setting in the middle of a lawn, collapsing all the sides to create a room out of it. It's all about seeing a building in a different way and utilizing the simplicity of the materials used, the setting, and the, the beauty of it to create something that's wonderful for a family to enjoy. Big space on that. You just, mm -hmm. When you stop, when you stop all the running around and you relax, you realize it's a big space. Huh? Sean, I said it's a big space. Yeah, so it is, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloody big space, that's what it is. <laughs> it's not just a big space, it's a massive space.